Welcome to The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. I am your host, Cicely Davis. Today on The Savage Truth, a Washington Post journalist tweets about the very woke and complicated emotions of the hit Fast Car by Tracy Chapman as remade by country music star Luke Combs. We'll talk about the idiocy of these reactions as the woke mob grasps at straws to keep its lowlife members triggered. And sticking to music, you've all heard it, hopefully you viewed it, Jason L. Dean has a new video entitled Try That in a Small Town. And no surprise, there's controversy surrounding the video, its location, its lyrics, and yes, you've guessed it, its audacity to promote protection of self, loved one's property, as CMT canceled the video. I'll give my spin and my take on the song and video, which I hope becomes number one of the year. It's all about the music, and it's coming up on The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, everyone, to The Savage Truth. I am your happy, American-loving, patriotic, untriggered host, Cicely Davis. So happy you have decided to tune in. It's been great connecting with you. You know what? I am having fun. I'm having fun. You know what? It's fun. It's fun to tell the truth and to be bold about my love affair with America with absolutely no apologies for America's genesis, America's history. It's a privilege, truly. It's a privilege to be born on the soil of the greatest country ever conceptualized or erected. And I am absolutely stoked. I'm stoked for the upcoming presidential election and season of 2024. As always, you know, I'm going to ask, please like, subscribe, share, and leave a positive review on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts as we get into this week's cultural selective outrage. This week, we're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about the music. You know, research has shown and proven that listening to music can reduce anxiety. It can help reduce blood pressure and pain, as well as improve overall sleep quality. It helps with the mood and mental alertness and memory. John Hopkins Medicine has put out reports that listening to music keeps your brain young. And according to Pfizer.com, the limbic system, which is involved in processing emotions and controlling memory, literally lights up when our ears perceive music. So music is good for us. When you experience chills and you hear a, when you hear a particularly moving piece of music, it may be the result of dopamine, which is a neural transmitter that triggers sensations of pleasure and well-being. Music is really, really, really good for us. Personally, music has always been a part of my life, literally since birth. Um, I remember being a um, really enthusiastic child, loving to sing choir, sing in the church choir as a child. And my dad, I remember, had a, for a very short period of time, a part-time job at a local bar. Um, He served as security. And, And then afterwards, from time to time, while he was still with my mom, they would sometimes bring the after party of the bar back to my house. So after they would come home and awaken and relieve and pay the babysitter, the after party of the bar would then extend to my house. And I remember loud music and rambunctious, loud, happy people, um, perhaps a little bit out of control, but music was always playing and blasting. And every once in a while, my dad, depending on his mood, would allow us Um, to pick a song and plug in the microphone into his very expensive, probably he couldn't afford it, um, stereo system and allow my sister and I to sing a song or two to perform in front of their friends. And I just love the applause and the accolades and getting to perform. In fact, that was my first exposure besides singing in the choir of performing and being in front of people. But music was always there. And I very specifically and nostalgically remember um, those sounds, sounds like from Rick James and Cool in the Gang and Sam Cooke, the OJs, Morris Day, Teddy Pendergrass, Luther Vandross, just to name a few. Now, maybe some of those names don't ring a bell to you or you weren't quite into that sound. This was very much the sound of the late 70s, early 80s. 
Um, you know, this was R and B, very soulful. So if you don't connect with that, that's understood. But I just wanted you to know what it was like music in my household. My father owned, like I said, a very expensive record player and stereo system. And he would yell at us if we came bursting through the house from outside because he said it would shake the floors and scratch his perfect records. But music has always, always, always had um, presence in my life. And so music is good. And, you know, but I grew up in the presence of music and I very specifically remember also as I grew, the presence of music um, stuck with me. In fact, the presence and the impact of music only grew. I, I remember having um, such admiration for two artists in the 80s, and that was Whitney Houston and Madonna, for two very different reasons. We have two very different artists. Whitney Houston, of course, being that black pop princess with this angelic, God-given voice, and then Madonna being that rebellious pop star um, who was really edgy. Um, they had a lot of influence in my life. So, you know, we all have our favorite artists, favorite genres, and we like to use music to inspire and evoke mostly happy or good feelings and good emotions. So why? Why then? Why the outrage of the brilliant, beautifully written, storytelling, lyrical magic of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car as remade by country music star Luke Combs? Why is this song and his remaking of the song causing such negative reaction and, and causing such controversy? So listen to this. I want to share this with you. A Washington Post journalist by the name of Emily Yar, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Y-A-H-R, tweeted, and I quote, as Luke Combs' hit cover of Tracy Chapman's Fast Car dominates the country charts, it's bringing up some complicated emotions in fans and singers who know that Chapman, as a queer Black woman, would have almost zero chance at that achievement herself. Zero achievement of that herself. Absolutely, emphatically, unequivocally, un true. Now, let's let's keep a few things in mind and, and we're going to talk through this here a little bit. So, for those of you who don't remember Fast Car when it first came out, I mean, this thing domi this song dominated the charts. It was catchy, it was melodic, it was clever, it was gr it was really well written and Ma Tracy Chapman, of course, sang it like no other, um not only just because it was hers, but because she was just a fantastic talent. So this was a massive hit by Tracy Chapman of 35 years ago. I believe it was recorded in 1988. Listen to the um zero chance of accolades that she received from Fast Car. It was nominated for three Grammy Awards, including Record of the Year and Song of the Year. Not to mention she won Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and Best New Artist. She also had seven other nominations for Grammy Awards and two other wins. Black queer woman has zero chance of receiving any notoriety or accolades or profits like the white combs. I mean, where do they get this stuff? You can't even make this up. And it's, it's so embarrassing for Yar that she wouldn't even have the intellect to actually do research, at least about the song itself. Um, that she would just simply tweet and let it go as if we're all supposed to just read that and believe it and then feel bad for Tracy Chapman. OK, so this the usual white liberal twist on or frame of this claim by Yar is that a white guy records the same song as a black queer woman and receives all kinds of accolades, profits, exposure and success while the poor black queer woman receives no notoriety at all. It's therefore Yar's white guilty duty to bring this to the forefront to make sure everyone knows and acknowledges that once again, whiteies have stolen from the blacks and should acknowledge their oppressive ways. <laughs> Though they may not be conscious, according to Yar, whites have yet again held another black person back from due success. Shame, shame. I mean... Here we have already, or once again, um, the oppressive whites tripped over our white privilege 
at the behest or to the detriment of yet another black person. I mean, <laughs> not only did this get fact check, and this is what I really love about this, you all. Not only was this heavily, heavily fact checked um, on that Washington Post, but Chase C. Chapman herself literally wrote in and actually expressed appreciation for Combs' recording of the song. She uh, left a, uh, she wrote something into People Magazine, and, and this is what she wrote. She, she said this, and I quote, I never expected to find myself on the country music charts, but I'm honored to be there. Praising the new version by Combs, I'm happy for Luke and his success and grateful that new fans have found and embraced Fast Car. So it's heavily fact-checked because she was absolutely wrong about what she wrote in. But then you have the artist, the original artist, actually give praise to Luke Combs for his re-recording of the song, giving her yet another place um, in music. She never expected to be on the country charts. She went from pop to country, and she's also receiving residuals, right? So don't feel sorry for Tracy Chapman. This is what the woke whiners do. Now, I don't know about you, but I actually didn't know. I didn't even know she was queer. But here you have a queer black woman, black female artist, won multiple Grammys, made millions, still makes off the song, still makes residuals off the song to this day, as it also was a strong and huge commercial hit because the song is so brilliant. It was actually used in commercials and for theme songs for other things. I mean, she did really, really well with the song. A young country singer who, by the way, recorded the remake because it, he said it's one of his actual favorite songs. She gets residuals off it. It's not like he just went in and stole the song and recorded and gave her no um, notoriety. It's not like he just stole the song from her. She actually is receiving residuals. In fact, it's I think it's been reported yesterday or the day before that she's already made half a million dollars off just the cover for him remaking the song. But the Washington Post, the corporate press machine, finds a way to wokeify the recording, the artist, and the homage remake to trigger outrage, right? This is what's happening. How asinine is this? It's asinine. It's not about race, and it's not about racism. And of course, because she's, um, as and she brought this forward, that she's queer, you know, they want to also use all of the protected classes to make sure that, you know, outrage is, is sparked. But this is just about stoking fires and it's about virtue signaling to keep people angry and, you know, just simply hate that people are just coming together in music. But for the fact that um, Luke Combs actually recorded a song and is doing very well and the original artist recorded a fantastic, lyrical, um, cleverly written and well-performed song, this in itself wouldn't even be a story. I mean, you can't even allow people to have that. Just an artist paying homage to another artist and remaking a song. How is this a story? I mean, the fact that we have to even sit down and discuss this and it becomes outrage is just absolutely asinine. But this is what we have to shake down. And so I really do implore everyone to go to, you know, wherever you go, Spotify or, you know, iTunes or wherever you and download the song or buy the song, whatever you have to do to support it. Make sure we're giving Tracy Chapman and Luke Combs the accolades that they deserve because they're two fantastic artists. They're very talented. And um, this is actually a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, it's not political. Um, and, uh, not sure what the woke, uh, woke mob is trying to do with this whole thing, but you know, this in itself is just, shouldn't be a story. Um, I'm happy for both of them. So anyway, moving on to yet an even bigger story in music, cause it's literally all about the music country music. Jason Aldean records a song in May and the video comes out. And it's entitled, Try That in a Small Town. This song is causing all kinds of controversy, having said to stoke division, to glorify violence and racism. So we're going to just kind of zero in on the lyrics here and kind of figure out and break this down as to why the woke mob media and so many others are having such a meltdown about this song and particularly the video. Here are some of the lyrics that have triggered um, so many people. 
got a gun they may got a gun that my granddad gave me. They say they're they say one day they're going to round up. Okay, so let's zero in on the lyrics to understand the true intent of Aldine's message. Here are some of the lyrics that cause such triggered reactions. Got a gun that my granddad gave me. They say one day they're going to round up. Well, that sh- exploitive, starting with an S, may fly in the city. Good luck. Try that in a small, t- small town. See how far you make it down the road. You cross that line, it won't take long for you to find out. I recommend you don't. Try that in a small town. Now, the video features real footage and images of looting and protesting and burning of the American flag. Elding took to Instagram to react to the backlash of the song and video, saying that the intent of the video and the song was to refer to the feelings of community and people taking care one for another, taking care and looking out for their neighbors, regardless of differences in backgrounds and belief. And he quoted this, he commented on Instagram, and I quote, In the past 24 hours, I have been accused of releasing a pro-lynching song, a song that has been out since May, and was subject to the comparison that I, direct quote, was not too pleased with the nationwide Black Lives Matter protests. These references are not only meritless, but dangerous. There's not a single lyric in the song that references race or points to it, and there is not a single video clip that isn't real news footage. And while I can try and respect others who have their own interpretation of a song with music, this one goes too far, end of quote. And I must say, you know, I'm standing with Jason Aldean on this. I'm standing with his wife as they both speak up. They're not backing down. That's exactly what we have to do. We have to rail against this kind of ridiculousness. Um, You never give in. You never back down. You never, ever concede. And you never, ever, ever apologize. So, you know, we really do have to get into this thing. So the accusation that this is racist is absolutely ludicrous because, well, always, I think the sensitivity that the woke side is trying to come up with is that because it's inner city, you know, of course, first and foremost and always, they're always trying to speak up and protect black people. But the problem is, is that there are a whole lot of black people that live in small towns all across America And they, too, don't believe in looting and rioting. They, too, believe in looking out one for another. They, too, own guns and are responsible with guns. They, too, live in small towns where they don't experience crime at the rate in which inner cities do. So we don't need, you know, the pat on the head and the lookout for black people as the woke mob so often does and frequently does and figures out a way to do so at every turn. Um, According to the media, we get the impression that not only only whites live in small towns, that if you are of the opinion that rioting should be opposed and that riots are shunned, then you must want to just randomly kill black people, rendering blacks once again as victims. Now, the video is also criticized for its location. Apparently, it's videoed on the premises of this courthouse. And I did some research on this a little bit. It's in front of the Maury County Courthouse in Columbia, Tennessee. And I did look this up. It's the same um, courthouse where there was an actual lynching. It's the same site where a black teenager was lynched in 1927. His name was Henry Choate, age 18, And he was accused of assaulting a 16-year-old white girl. And apparently there was some mob, white mob, that went to the courthouse and they tried to get in. And the sheriff's wife, she tried to hold him off as long as she could. But she was, you know, kind of backed into a corner and afraid of what they were going to do. So she let them in and they um, beat him with a sledgehammer or something. And then there was a lynching there. Now, this happened in 1927. Okay. So... This is where the outrage is because that's where they're saying that there's all kinds of insensitivity to um, black people because, you know, there's subliminal messages that he's for lynching and he's for, you know, the killing and violence against black people. And he was insensitive, purposely choosing um, that location to send a subliminal message, not just through the images, but by choosing that very location in which to shoot the video um, to push this racial racist rhetoric through this song. The question for me that I have, and you know, I always have questions, 
right? When I'm sitting around and I'm watching and listening this woke mob media. During that summer of love and the summer of peaceful protests, when businesses and buildings were looted and vandalized and statues were torn down, how did they miss this courthouse? I mean, if this courthouse is such a triggering and offensive building, this was their opportunity during this peaceful protest all across the country to take down that courthouse. I mean, that can't, it's not unheard of. I mean, certainly they can desecrate a building. They did so right here in Minneapolis with the third precinct, right? So this is not something that was out of their reach or out of their realm. I'm just trying to figure out how, if this was such a polarizing and offensive building, how they missed the quote unquote opportunity to take this building down. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's just hard for me. I mean, this literally, this kind of thing just burns, it boils my blood and it just literally turns my stomach because of the implications of, you know, the, the woke mob and their way of just trying to always just stoke fires and see racism at every turn. So they tore down statues and burned down buildings yet miss this Mari courthouse. I mean, <laughs> sloppy work. How sloppy. Here's my take, though, that this isn't really about glorifying gun violence. It's about respect and sense of community. You see, the woke mob and the media are embarrassed because the notion of the defund the police blew up in their faces. And in our inner cities, where crime is rampant and mass exodus has reigned, they hate it that in predominantly blue cities, crime is rampant, right? I mean, we're, we're really seeing that in major cities across the country, especially blue cities. They're resentful of the people and the love and the sense of community and safety of rural areas and small towns. And they hate seeing that. They hate seeing the unity. They hate people coming together, loving each other, having a sense of um, respect for others and property having a sense of duty to look out and care for one another and take care of community and, and have faith and, and believe in family and, and take care of your neighborhood and take care of your neighbors. They hate seeing it. They hate that quality of life, that sense of safety and a value system that the rural um, and small town America brings about. I mean, when you talk about the heartland of America, that's rural America, that's small town USA. And that just boils their blood. And they absolutely hate the image of it. They hate the sense of it. They hate the fact that the people live there and they're feeling good and that they, they look out for each other. And it just is still shows that at the end of the day, America is enduring and it's unbreakable and that there is a spirit that they haven't been able to break up. So I'm going to be honest with you. I encourage everyone to, again, download this song, play it as much as you can, play it in your car, play it at work, right? Blast it in your car on your way home or to and from work. Play that video. Make sure you tell others. And then, you know, as much as you can, support Jason Aldean and his wife um, in playing this song. You know, this is small town USA and rural America. This is, it's not inner cities where, and listen, I live in the inner city. Okay. This is, but I have to admit my mom lives in a small town now. She's back living in a small town and there's a totally different way of life. I mean, there's just a lot more respect, respect of people's property. You say hello and good morning and goodbye. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. There's respect of elders and law enforcement. Um, you know, people use the restroom in appropriate facilities, not in the streets. Businesses and business owners are respected and patron and gun ownership is common. Um, but they they really hold in high regard gun safety. And that, of course, is a huge and a big issue that they take with this whole notion. So, so you're mad at the contrast between small town living and inner city dwelling? Too bad. You know, that's what I say to you. Too bad. Here's another song that I literally just encourage everyone to go and play and blast in their homes and their cars. Um, CMT canceling the video. I mean, clearly they're not paying attention because... Um, you know, we've gained so much in our fight, you know, using Bud Light as an example. I think that CMT has, you know, really upset a lot of fans. And if I were them, I'd be really, really careful about canceling videos and the message that they send and, you know, really kind of ticking off the wrong set of people. But this um, 
courthouse appearance, by the way, this courthouse that the video was shot has had a lot of other Hollywood productions. And we've heard absolutely nothing, nothing for the woke mob on that. Um, I think that people, us Americans, the American majority, that we've just decided that we're just about sick and tired of forced agendas. And uh, you know what? We're speaking up. And I, for one, am just really proud of us. And we're gaining. There's a long way to go. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more to gain in our fight. But I like seeing the courage and the boldness. And I think that we should keep it up. And the one way we can do that is by embracing Luke Combs and Jason Aldean and that music and, and making sure we're supporting those songs. So the very same people who were outraged by the Bud Light boycott, you know, remember they were saying, it's just a can. Come on. What's the big deal? It's just a can. They're now saying that this is not just a song, but it's riddled in racism and it's a glorification of gun violence and it's a ridiculing of, of a whole people. And, you know, it's just stoked and, and dripping in racism and they're just absolutely triggering as much as they possibly can because they do, they're starting to feel threatened and we're gaining in that. Now I can say this, you know, I, I had a lot of thoughts going on about this and I said, you know, I wonder if we were to kind of turn the tables on this. What if we had a situation where um, like Luke Combs recording Tracy Chapman, I wonder if the outrage would have been the same if we had the iconic and talented Dolly Parton, remaking Cardi B's WAP. Now I said WAP, W-A-P, for those of you who don't know, stands for, W-A-P stands for wet ass rhymes with wussy, okay? I'm gonna just say, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't heard it, just just go look up the video or Google it or what have you, bring it up on Bing and you can understand what I'm saying. But I wonder if the outrage would have been just the same or would they have accused her of cultural appreci um, appropriation at that point? But, you know, obviously uh, you wouldn't have Dolly Parton or the likes of Dolly Parton recording such a ridiculous and obnoxious, grotesque song like WAP. But I, I do wonder, you know, we have to wonder about these things. And if anyone... Um, would object to it. I just wonder if the woke mob would do it because what it would do would be in the sense of equity and inclusion. It would actually put Cardi B now on the country charts, right? She's a hip hop artist. It would put Cardi B, a multimillionaire for these grotesque lyrics on the country charts. I wonder if that outrage would be the same. I really, really doubt it. But again, just go out and support this. Now, I have written down the lyrics and I just wanted to share with everyone kind of the difference of what we have going on here. So, you know, you have Tracy Chapman and her beautiful lyrics and I'll, I'll just, this is literally just the beginning of the song and it is this, you got a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. Maybe we can make a deal. Maybe together we can get somewhere. Any place is better. Starting from zero, got nothing to lose. Maybe we can make something. Me, myself, I got nothing to lose. Beautiful. Lyrical. It's clever. It's witty. And then, of course, her beautiful melodic voice singing it to the acoustics of the guitar and the simplicity of the video, right? She's not glamorized. She's just sitting there in her talent with her voice and the delivery um, and playing the guitar, and it's just beautiful. It just catches you right away. Now, in contrast, <laughs> okay. Now, mind you, everyone, this was Song of the Year by BET, Black Entertainment Television. This was Song of the Year in 2021, okay? Now, I had to skip around because I tried to really pull the essence, but at the same time, because it's a podcast, I didn't want to be a little too gross. So if you're interested and you want to see just the lyrics of this song, um, you certainly can look it up. But so I just read to you the lyrics from Tracy Chapman in comparison. Okay. In comparison, we have Cardi B and, and, and um, WAP and it, and it begins like this. Whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hole up. 
I said, certified freak, seven days a week. Gobble me, swallow me, drip down inside of me. Quick jump out for you let it get inside of me. <laughs> and I go silent. It's truly deafening, the comparison of the two artists. Now, I want to remind everyone that Tracy Chapman's fast car has received all kinds of accolades she's won. But that song, as beautiful as it is, rose to number six on the pop charts. Cardi B, however, there's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me. Was named number one on BET in 2021. Song of the year. This is the decline in America. And that's really where the true and real outrage should be. Tracy Chapman now has a place in country music. She has been paid a wonderful tribute by Luke Combs. She now receives more in residuals, actually bringing pop and country music together, bringing pop and country music fans together. And this is what truly bothers the media and the woke mob. Jason Aldean records a song that ridicules burning of American flag He ridicules vandalism. He speaks against crime. He speaks against the eradication of law and order, a deconstruction of long-held American values. He should be the one offended, not only for the outrage and the cancellation of his video, but he should be ticked off royally that his song wasn't number one on the charts because of that, because of what it brought forward. If, If Cardi B can get song of the year, for gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me, certainly this song can reach number one. This media-driven division needs to stop. 2024 and the upcoming presidential election will be the opportunity for the American majority, for us. We are the majority. Don't let anyone convince or tell you differently. It's an opportunity, and it will be an opportunity for us who hold these values, regardless of ethnicity, to stand first as Americans and put a stop to this destructive outrage culture and perpetuate first and foremost American values, America first values. And so, as you know, for those of you who have been listening or for those of you who are brand new, I always stick a savage truth in every episode. And here's this week's savage truth. Luke Combs and Jason Aldean simply did what they do well, make music. If you felt in some way because of a lynching story of a hundred years ago or lyrics about respecting others, building of community, respect of property, and looking out one for another, holding law and order in high regard is somehow racist, kick rocks. Okay, that's what I say to you. Kick rocks. Small towns simply are safer than inner cities, and they represent the heartland of America. We are therefore praising and raising up rural areas and small towns this week. Woke mob media, eh, you lose. And that wraps it up for me, folks. It's all about the music this week. Again, please like and subscribe and leave a positive review and tune in on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify. Be bold, be courageous, be faithful, be true. I'm Cicely Davis. The Savage Truth with Cicely Davis is a production of Front Page Magazine and the David Horowitz Freedom Center. Reproduction of this podcast without express written consent is prohibited.